We are back. Andrew Capone here, still down in Hallandale Beach, Florida, on my way to the, the Gulfstream Park with my partner, Caleb Knight. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at the Santa Anita Stakes this weekend. We have the Robert B. Lewis for Derby Points. Uh, I want to say a couple things before we start looking at this. Uh, I have to say this is one of the sadder fields that's come up, in my opinion. You know, we have five, five horse field, um, one in one sixty of a mile. It's going to be 81 and sunny, beautiful day, only warm place in the country uh, this weekend. It's going to be Santa Anita. And just like look at the disparity of racing districts. We have New York with 20-degree weather and a field of 11, and we're only at five out west here, the two of them being Bob Baffert horses. So it's not exactly the field I was looking for coming into this weekend. Um, I was hoping to get a little bigger. To me, this is a, a more of a, a situation where we have a, uh, you know, a – three-horse field with five horses, um, just because two of them just don't seem to fit for me. But uh, we'll take a look at this and run through the card quickly. We'll take a look at the, this one here. Um, draws the rail, one of two of Baffert in the field, tactical speed. Um, you can toss the last race at Losal. Horse finished second, but it was really up against it, and Losal just isn't a fit for some horses. It was clear it wasn't here. JV for Baffert. Um, horse should just ride the rail and merry going around it all the way around. Uh, there's nothing much to say. To, for me, to, that's going to make this horse any better. It's going to be short. Um, if we get 6 to 5, 75, I think that's going to be a gift. I think it's going to be shorter than that. Um, and knowing these Santa Anita races, somehow somebody's going to squeeze, uh, scratch out at the last minute. Uh, what do you think of the 2 and 3 here, Caleb? Yeah, not the most exciting derby prep that I've seen so far this year. Uh, starting with the number 2, Sir London. Uh, this horse is a little bit interesting. Uh, I see HRN has him you know, kind of guesstimated around 4 to 1. If that's true, that's an excellent price because I thought the source would be more like two to one second choice, honestly. So we'll see how the board shakes out. But either way, uh, this horse, you know, tried Santa Anita and Del Mar and kind of found one better in each of those starts before just absolutely crushing an overmatched field at Losile last time. Uh, this is a horse that's going to take a lot of action, I think, because Freely and Pratt ends up here. I mean, did he have choice over, you know, Messier, the Bafferts, or either of the Bafferts, I suppose, and uh, this horse? I, I don't know. Uh, but it is interesting to see that this is the mount that Pratt gets here. Uh, not one I'm in love with necessarily, because I'm always a little bit skeptical of Los Alamitos' form and how well that translates. But uh, nevertheless, this horse is certainly one of the probably three major players in this race. Cabo Spirit, uh, unfortunately, is probably not one of the three major players in this race. Uh, he just seems like he's a turf horse. I mean, he's pioneer of the Nile with a fancy day, the Irish bread underneath. And he tried dirt three times. He only hit the board once. And they put him on the turf, and he's rewarded them. You know, he got a, a win, or two wins, actually, including the, the local stakes here, the Eddie Logan, which was a pretty strong race where the second place and show horse came back to win after that. Uh, he was just barely beaten uh, in a grade three race, two back. So he's a good turf horse, but unfortunately this race is on the dirt and I just don't see it. Yeah, I had the same feeling there. I, I thought a turf, turf horse on dirt, you know, I've picked some of them in the past and they haven't worked <laughs> out for me. So uh, we'll just move on from there. We'll take a look at Wharton here, the other Baffert. Candy ride baby, uh, but only sprinters on the damn side. So a little bit interesting. I don't know if this horse is going to do well with the distance with the pace that they're going to carry up front here. Um, horse might have an opportunity, but I, I don't necessarily see it. Um, usually when you have two Bafferts like this and, and one, one has JV and one has, uh, one has JV and it's also going to be a lot shorter. I really just stick with the favorite here. Um, last horse on the outside, happy Jack. This horse needs to leap long jump. I don't know what you need to say. They need, this horse needs to do to get forward to join this class. Uh, two turns is going to be a tough ask. Doug O'Neill has surprised me before, um, but I don't think this horse is fast enough for this crew, and I don't think this horse is going to be the main contenders. I really do think we have a horse field here. Um, I know it's sort of a sad field. We only have five. Uh, just taking a quick look here at the bias report for Santa Anita. Um, we're seeing one of the most base tracks we've seen in a long time. 33%, 33%, 33%. So the track's really not showing too much of a hand here. A um, little skewed to the inside rail, but that's really just because their average field size is only 5.75. Um, so it's not really any type of post position skew with that small field size. Uh, but I will say, you know, it is pretty interesting that they're balanced out on the recency bias. Uh, Caleb, who'd you like here for your top pick? Top pick? Yeah, well, uh, well, I certainly do respect Messier. I'm actually going to go with the other Baffert, an angle that's burned me many, many times in the past. Uh, number four, Wharton. 
I know that it might just be as simple as Velasquez had choice. I mean, these are both Bafferts, both owned by you know, Starlight Racing, and maybe I'm just picking the worst one. But because some of Messier's races kind of bother me, um, he kind of got caught last out with a whole lot of other excuse, you know, twice beaten chalk. So I'm going to take a shot on a horse that probably does need to improve, but I think he probably has a little more upside. Uh, Wharton, you know, crushed the field the way you would expect of Baffert to crush the field, despite not really taking any money in that day, uh, getting sent off at four to one and only a six horse field, you know, with Baffert and Velasquez. Uh, I wish I was paying more attention that day because certainly would have liked to have uh, made a bet there, but you're not going to get four to one today, I don't think. But uh, I do think that despite losing Velasquez, I think this horse still makes some sense. That, that maiden race was you know, fairly strong for the level uh, of the four runners to come back and race again. Two of them won next time out. Uh, we know that Baffert is you know, excellent at getting these horses to stretch out and maintain their speed, although there is some concern with uh, you know, going to two turns here. But I'm going to take a shot with Wharton here just because I don't particularly trust Messier at probably odds on status. And I'd like to see a little more out of Sir London before going to that well also, but uh, not a race I'm incredibly excited to bet, but I would probably land on Wharton as my lukewarm pick here. I'll only be betting this race because I require myself to bet it if I'm giving out a pick. I'm going to be on the rail of Messier. I'm going to bet the horse to win. Um, I think this is a Baffert's, one of Baffert's uh, stable, uh, st stable stallions that's going to be making its way through, making a Breeders' Cup, uh, breaking a Kentucky Derby, and then maybe a Breeders' Cup type of run. Um, I, similar to you, I do not trust the two yet. Uh, I need to see a little bit more out of it. I think that's going to be a more late developing horse. Maybe we'll see some stuff over the summer, a Haskell type of player, Penn Derby, something like that, Charlestown Million, something, somewhere in that range. I'm not really going to focus on looking at this race too much more than that. I have no long shot for this race. I'm really only playing a win bet. I think this field is too short um, for there to be any interest in, in playing any type of uh, verticals, it's really just going to be a single in my horizontal. Pick the one and move on. Do you have a long shot here? Uh, unfortunately, I do not. I, I tried, um, you know, but it's a five horse field. I mean, what a long shot's going to be, what, seven to two in this race? <laughs> so, I mean, I tried to make the case for Happy Jack, uh, just given that you know, he is probably the only kind of true closer in the field, but it's just asking a lot for this horse to turn around on, you know, 10 or 11 days rest and stretch out and face winners for the first time and stakes company. And it just feels like they're really throwing this horse to the wolves here. So I couldn't do it. So no, I mean, I guess my four horse, my top pick would be my long shot, just given that he's not the favorite. <laughs> well, I appreciate those picks. Uh, we got an exciting weekend of racing here. Uh, three road to the Derby prep races. We have a uh, five race stakes card at Aqueduct. I mean, at uh, Gulfstream Park, and uh, we're going to see some other action all around the country. Uh, Santa Anita, hopefully this five-horse field turns out a little bit better um, next time for their, their, their upcoming prep races. But uh, we'll be back next week with a couple more picks. Uh, we ask you to like and subscribe on YouTube. That way you get notifications every time a new show comes up. Thanks, and see you next week.